Amen. 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 I like it when people uh, follow the Lord in obedience. Amen. Amen. And, uh, but uh, you know, and um, we uh, <clears throat> we we are baptized because um, we believe, right? And uh, I mean, why go to church anyway? You know, um, why uh, why is membership important? <laughs> Uh, why get baptized? All those uh, questions, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, over the years I've had um, uh, this one, uh, these, this, this one couple, they came in, and um, I uh, was trying to lead them in believer's baptism, and uh, they, they instructed me that uh, he, had, he had already been baptized in the Holy Ghost, and they didn't need water baptism, and um, I says, uh, well, how come Jesus was water baptized then? So Jesus said to John the Baptist that it uh, behooved him to fulfill all righteousness. And if Jesus Christ did it, we ought to do it. Because that's what he says, repent and be baptized every one of you. Now, if you don't repent, if you don't believe, you can go into the water of a dry center and come out a wet one. So, uh, so uh, it's believers, believers. <laughs> it's, uh, I want to remind us uh, of the gospel this week out of 1 Corinthians um, uh, 15, 1 Corinthians 15, and um, because, um, and this is another uh, post-resurrection um, appearance of Jesus. And um, I wanted to em emphasize that the last few Sundays about the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. And it says, um, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Now this is the Corinthian church, and they, they've had the gospel preached to them. And from the First Baptist Church, you've had the gospel preached to you. And, but I'm going to declare the gospel to you, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein we stand. Now we stand not in church membership. We stand not in self-righteousness. We stand in the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we stand in. And uh, it says in verse 2, by which also you are saved. That's how we get saved, by believing the gospel message. Uh, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. You mean I could believe and it would be in vain? Whoa. Yeah, you, yeah. That's what it says here. You know, we need to understand that we need to keep on believing. We need to understand that, you know, uh, after the waters of baptism, we just don't go and say, well, I'm, I've got my get out of hell free card now, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, show St. Peter up there, you know, our baptismal certificate and say, you know, this is why I need to get into heaven. No, you have to believe in our, our Lord and Savior, and we have to stand in the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so uh, it says, wherein we stand. And it also says here, uh, verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all the which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. Now, do we have to receive that truth that Christ died for my sin? Yes. yes. We have to receive that truth. The Apostle Paul received that truth. He received that truth that uh, how, uh, first of all, which uh, I received, how that Christ died for our sins, and get this, according to the Scriptures. I love that when they did that. Peter did it. The Apostle Paul says, according to the Scriptures. A lot of people say, well, you know, I've just got my own ideas about Christianity. A lot of people say, I've got my own ideas about church. A lot of people say, I've got my own ideas about how to get saved. A lot of people say, well, you know, uh, and they don't believe in certain uh, doctrines or they, they don't believe in hell or, or they don't believe in this or that. But you need to understand that we, need, we are saved by one, uh, one way only and that's through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life and no man can comes to the Father but by Him. Amen. 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 You see, according to the Scriptures, verse 4, and He was buried, 
and that he rose again the third day, get this, according to the scriptures. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's way. I mean, how do we how do we know for sure? It's according to the word of God. It's according to the scripture. It's not according to my uh, mindset. It's not according to the Jesus I made up in my own mind because that's idolatry. We need to understand that according to the scriptures, we follow the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's believers' baptism. Amen. Verse five. <clears throat> And that he was seen of Cephas and then of the twelve. Now Cephas was who? Peter. Peter, okay. So that's the same same guy. Peter, Cephas, same guy. After that he was seen above 500 brethren at once. Now post-resurrection post appearance of Jesus. He was seen uh, above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto the present but some are falling asleep. Now, uh, maybe some of them have died. After that, he was seen of James and then of all the apostles. Now, this was James, the brother of Jesus. James, the brother. He, and that's the James that wrote the book of James, the brother of Jesus. And Jude, his other half-brother, I should say, wrote the book of Jude. All right. So in, uh, because, you know, before the, <clears throat> before the uh, resurrection, his, his half-brothers didn't believe in him. Because, you know, I mean, they were probably resented him a little bit because probably Mary was saying, why can't you be a little bit more like Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> After all, he's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> but James, uh, I believe that's why he's mentioned here. He was mentioned, uh, uh, and after seeing of James, then of all the apostles. Verse 8, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. And he was uh, seen of the apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, wasn't he? Road to Damascus. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Amen. Amen. Post-resurrection appearance. 500, does it say, now does it say five, of over 500 um, just people? Or does it say 500 brethren? brethren? Now on the day of Pentecost, there were 120 in the upper room. My question is, is where were the other 360 people? They saw him after he rose from the dead. Now, um, <clears throat> we see many people come and go. <clears throat> many people start out in the ways of God, but lose faith and do not continue in the ways of God. The Apostle Paul said, this grace upon me was not in vain because I labored more abundantly. Okay. <clears throat> and so, um, uh, why is that? And there's a study out there that when people come to church, that if they do not get into a Bible study within the church, that only 14% will continue to come to church. That's why I emphasize Bible study. I emphasize Sunday school. I emphasize getting in, a, I emphasize being a, a, a student of the Word that only 14% will continue to come to church. But on the other hand, if people come to church and get involved in a Bible study or Sunday school, that 87% will continue to come and grow in their faith. Why is it important to come to church? To know Him. To grow in faith. Yeah, to grow. No Christian can have real success in the Christian life without the fellowship of other believers. You know? 
That's one of the physical pieces of God we hold, right? The, the body of Christ, the fellowship of the believers. And so uh, we need the body of Christ as imperfect as it is. You know, um, as a matter of fact, the body of Christ, as imperfect as it is, is one of the physical things of God that we hold in our hand uh, here on earth. Another thing is the Word of God. It's a physical piece of God we hold in our hand, and we read and study it. And what's the other one? It's the creation, isn't it? We look at the creation and we can see God. Romans chapter 1 answers that question. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 15 through 18, Matthew 16, 15 through 18, He saith unto them, who, who knows, uh, But whom say you that I am? And He was asking the question, uh, you know, they're up there on the uh, coast of uh, Philippi and, and different things. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, man am? And, and uh, some were saying, well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're one of the prophets. But then he says, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And, um, and Simon Peter, that's Cephas, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter always had the answer, right? This time he got it right. Sometimes he didn't get it right. But he always had the answer. Now it says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So this wasn't given you uh, by, you know, the uh, flesh and blood. And some, some man didn't tell you who Jesus was. It was revealed to you by God. It was revealed to you from heaven. And, uh, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah. It's on the profession. It's on the revelation of who Jesus is that he is building his church today. And that's why we ought to come and meet together. That's why we ought to come to church. Ephesians says that Jesus gave His life for the church. The church came into existence out of the heart of God. It is a divine in origin. And God loves her. God cares for her. And God gave His life for her. Every believer should realize that he belongs to it. Or he, she belongs to it. And openly take their place in it. And shoulder their responsibility regarding it. Today we see a lot of people who want to come and be entertained by worship as long as you do not ask them to do anything or get under the authority of the Word of God, they're fine. But the minute you ask them to do anything or get under the authority of the Word of God, they say, well, uh, you know, i got other things to do. And pastor, I'll come if I, there's nothing else I need to do. They're not making it their priority or anything. And you know, a lot of times people come in and they do not submit to the Word of God. They do not submit uh, to, uh, to the body of Christ. They do not submit to anybody because they have their own minds made up. And what does the second commandment say? Thou shalt uh, not have any graven images. And people engrave an image of their God in their mind all the time. And unfortunately... There's a lot of uh, images of God graven in people's minds. It's not the true Jesus. You see, Jesus instructed His disciples in uh, what He was doing here on earth when He said in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, I just read it a while ago, but 18, uh, says that all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So, you know, a lot of people think that, well, because of the wickedness of the world, that Jesus just don't have that much power down here on earth. He's got it in heaven, but he don't have it on earth. Oh. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And I, I, I submit to you today that all power is given to Jesus on earth. Yeah. I submit to you today that Jesus uh, can change things down on earth. I submit to you today that uh, all power is given unto Jesus in heaven and in earth. And then he says, go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the 
Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And we need to understand, we are not to the end of the world yet. And so we are to go, therefore, and teach all nations, and, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son. Not the names, plural, the name, singular, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We are one body, the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have, all, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. You see, it's one Spirit. It's the one Spirit of God. And we are baptized. The Spirit of God is God, isn't He? And we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, 4 and 5. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called into one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's not several baptisms. It's this one baptism. And it's the baptism of wa by water and baptism in the Holy Ghost. We need to understand uh, that when, uh, when we uh, follow the Lord in obedience, uh, God does some things in our life that we cannot explain. We need to understand when we follow Him in obedience, uh, God gives us the power that we cannot understand. He gives us the power to go forth in a wicked world and to tell somebody else about Jesus. He gives us the power of the Holy Spirit inside us. And I submit to you today what the church needs today is a good old fashioned dose of the Holy Ghost. We need to understand that we need, we need to receive Him. We need to understand that we need to walk in Him. Well, Lord, and be obedient to Him. Realizing that we are in the body of Christ, we need to join a body of believers. If we remain aloof from all organized churches, hoping to have a broader fellowship with all believers, mm -hmm. belonging to all churches, we deceive ourselves. Right. We need to find a church that identifies with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to find believers like Dominic, and Kaylee that believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Luke 19.10 that He came to seek and to save that which is lost. I say that to say this, that not all things that are done in the name of God are right and redemptive. In today's world especially. Or in today, Jesus came into the, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. They all thought they were redemptive. They all thought they were right. But none of them were right. No. You see, the Pharisees wanted to stone the woman that was caught in adultery. But Jesus saved her. And he said to her accusers, He that's without sin, you be the first one to cast a rock at her. Whoa. You know? It says they left from the oldest to the youngest. Us old guys have more to be. That's right. We've got more sin in our life. <laughs> Besides, that rocks are heavy. <laughs> they used to not be so heavy. Now, I just want to say right here, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I'm not ashamed to be called a Christian. And I'm and second of all, I'm not ashamed to be called a Southern Baptist. Yeah. Because I will identify myself with a group of believers that that believe that the Bible is the infallible word of God. Amen. Amen. Now I'm not saying that all Southern Baptists are right. I'm not saying that. But as a as a group, there are a lot of so-called denominations that have left believing what the Word of God says and have went their own way and even started ordaining homosexuals in their leadership and everything else. You know, we need to understand that we need to identify with a group that believes that the Word of God is the Word of God. Baptists used to be called the people of the book because that's what we preach. You see? And 
Second of all, that Jesus of the Bible is who he said that he is, and he is God in the flesh. I will identify myself with a group of people who are valiant for the truth, and his name is Jesus. On the day of Pentecost, those who were converted were baptized and were added to the church, and the word of God says. Okay? And so, uh, if you have really received Jesus Christ as soon as possible, find a group of people who have received Him and unite yourself with them. You see? If it's this church, praise God. God says He places members in the body where it pleases Him. I tell people, if God is pleased to have you here, we are pleased to have you here. If God is not pleased to have you here, we're not pleased to have you here either. Because you're going to be a source of confusion and you're going to be a source of division. Mm -hmm. well, I say, well, that's pretty unloving, Pastor Curtis. No, it's the truth. It's reality. Say it's it. reality, yeah. It, One of the things they don't teach in, in our cemeteries, or I mean our seminaries, <laughs> <laughs> is a subject on conflict resolution. Where does conflict come from? It comes from people wanting their own way. It comes from people with their own religion in their mind. And uh, a lot of times, you know, instead of doing what's right, they will defend their position. They will, de they will defend their feelings. They will defend everything and uh, not get under the su uh, submission and the authority of God. You see, many people are looking for the perfect church. But I got news for you. There are no perfect churches. In a church where you are the only member, it would be the most imperfect church at all. Amen. Amen. I also understand that there are a lot of organizations out there that call themselves church that are not a church. There's, there's organizations out there that call themselves Baptists that aren't that aren't the church. I mean, you have this group that years, you know, a few years ago that we we're calling ourselves Baptists that we're going and protesting, you know, uh, uh, people and, and calling them nasty names and stuff. They were no, uh, they were causing division. They weren't causing uh, unity. They weren't causing, uh, they weren't evangelizing anybody. Not a God. You see, uh, the Corinthian church we just was reading in Corinthians. The Corinthian church was not a perfect church. I mean, the Corinthian church, they were, I mean, they had some uh, uh, gross immorality going on in it. They were getting drunk at the Lord's Supper. They were suing each other in court. I mean, they were not a perfect church. The Corinthian church was not a perfect church, yet Paul never dreamed of advising any believer in the Corinthian church to go out of an imperfect church. He didn't say, well, you need to leave this and find another. I could understand it if there was a Baptist church in court. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the... Uh, uh, I also understand that there are a lot of organizations out there that call themselves churches that are not the church. And here's some guidelines to help you find the right church. Find a church that teaches and preaches the Bible. Amen. You can readily check this out for yourself since you probably own a Bible. If what is being preached or taught from the pulpit or your Sunday school class does not line up with uh, what you've been reading, keep looking. Amen. Amen. Yep. I remember years ago, I uh, went down to my mom's and they were having... She was involved in this church, in, biggest church in Sacramento, actually, years ago. And they were having home Bible studies. And I was down there for the weekend, one Saturday or something. And, uh, and, and they had a, a group that would come over, a group of elderly people. And they'd come over. And usually they would have a verse or two of scripture. And then they'd all sit around and play dominoes, Mexican train, right? It's a good, good domino game. Now... Uh, but uh, but anyway, uh, uh, she introduced me. I was, you know, kind of, you know, 
wishes she had. But anyway, <laughs> she, uh, she said that, uh, you know, that, that this is uh, my son, Curtis, and he's a pastor of, uh, of a church up in Fernley. And um, so uh, anyway, uh, I was listening to the guy trying to uh, uh, do the Bible study, and I was just kind of shaking my head and saying, man, I, he don't know what he's doing, you know. And um, so anyway, they asked me to say a few words, and so uh, you know me, I'm... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, chapters 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to share. I started ministering the Word of God to this group of people, probably 12, 14 people. I started ministering the Word of God. Just out of the Word of God. Ministering the Word of God. They did not let me quit for three hours. Glory. Wow. wow. Praise the Lord. What they were hearing from the pulpit was not the same thing that I was teaching. And it saddened my heart because these churches, they teach and preach other things besides what's in the book. You see, and um, the Bible is the all-sufficient rule of faith and practice. The Bible is the reliable revelation from God Himself. Unite with the church where there is a spirit of prayer. Not merely one into vain repetition. Unite with the church that has an active interest in the lost. Where people... Uh, where, where young Christians are looked uh, upon after and helped, where the minister and the people have a, have a love for the poor and the destitute. You see, uh, I have uh, people come across my path all the time, like the ones I mentioned that we prayed for. They're poor and destitute, and I don't think they, they know the Lord. And I had a, had a young man, uh, talking to a young man this week, he had a gambling addiction. So, uh, of course, I invited him to Christ because Christ came to heal the broken heart and set the captives free, right? Amen. Amen. So, uh, I invited him. No, I've been thinking about it. So, he lived back here in these apartments somewhere. You know, he lives in the neighborhood. You know? And um, we can invite. We can plant. We can water. And what does it say? God gives the increase. Yes, sir. And we need to be concerned about people because we have a whole city of people out here that's going to hell. We need to be concerned for their soul. Look for a church that ministers grace to the hearers and not condemnation. The book of John says, if they do not believe on the only begotten Son of God, the Bible says that they are condemned already. They're already condemned. The shed blood of... Uh, um, See, but Jesus came to break the bonds of condemnation and offer eternal life through the shed blood that He shed on Calvary's cross. This is the only, it is only through Jesus that any of us have a chance to escape hell and go to heaven. I thank my God that He has made a way where there was no other way, and it is on the, righte it is, it is on the righteousness of another that I must depend, and His name is Jesus. Unite with the church where Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. Amen. 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 I'm going to read a verse out of John chapter 10, verse 27 through 30. Jesus is talking here. John chapter 10. He says, um, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Mm -hmm. Alright? And I give unto them temporary life. Ah. <laughs> no, eternal life. Amen. Eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. If we're in the hand of God, guess what? We can't get plucked out of there. Amen. Right? My Father, which gave them me, get this, is greater than all. 
Everything you can think of, God is greater. He's greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. Ooh, boy, that man. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. See, if you have placed your life in the arms of Jesus, then you are safe from any doubt or threat that may come your way. It is not in your own ability that can save your soul and or that can keep your soul saved. If that was the case, I would have met the judgment of God years ago. But God commended His love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus says in John 5.24, John 5, 24, he says this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on me, there's that belief again, believeth on me, uh, uh, believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Glory. Right? Amen. Glory. Yes. Now, when a person believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord himself, will place that individual in his body where it pleases him. Why should we belong to a church? Because Jesus is the head of her, and Jesus is the bridegroom. And we'll come back and get her one of these days. The things that divide us into denominations are insignificant compared with the great fundamental truths, purposes, and faith that unite us in Christ alone. You see... There's a lot of different, probably, denominations represented here this morning that you had a past, uh, in, in your past. I don't care about those. I, I care about the truths of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because that's where we stand. Amen. When we stand before the throne of God on Judgment Day, He will not be interested in what, in what whether, or what, uh, what we belong to a certain denomination, but rather, we are His church. He's not going to ask us, well, were you a Baptist? Uh, were you a Pentecostal? Uh, <clears throat> no. He's going to say, did you know my son? Yeah. You see? I have the freedom, as a Southern Baptist, to preach the inerrant Word of God under the anointing of His Spirit. No hierarchy of man tells me what I can and cannot preach, which is in the case of some denominations. Right. However, I am held respons responsible by the Most High God to preach His Word and rightly divide it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, this church membership in Port now, they've come out in a lot of years with these non-denominational churches and they've even have denomination churches with the name another name on it to hide the denomination from the from the yeah. people right. okay and uh, so the thing is is you know there was a church in Corinth there was a church in Ephesus there was a church in Thessalonica and when Jesus and why why is this thing still alive? Why do we have a church in Fernley? It's because it's a God-given church. Uh, he says, on, on this truth, I will build my church. On this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Give me a church at the gates of hell because I'm going to snatch some people going into it. You know what I'm saying? Amen. We need to understand that God is still the God of heaven and He's still the God of earth. And when we come and we submit ourselves to Him, when we come and we worship Him in His glory, 
When we come and say, yes, Lord, when we uh, are out on the street at Walmart or, or you know, wherever, at Lowe's or wherever it is, and, and, and God quickens our, our heart to speak to somebody or driving on the road like uh, Brother James does, and God uh, quickens uh, their heart, we need to understand it's an opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ because that's where we stand. Amen. And that we need to be obedient. To those times, I, I remember a time or two where I wasn't obedient and my heart slew me after the person left because I never got an opportunity to do it again. Mm -hmm. But now I don't want to miss an opportunity to share Jesus with the lost. Share Jesus with a backslidden Christian. To share Jesus with a sheep that has gone astray. To share Jesus He's the way, the truth, and the life. And we need to have our focus upon Him. Amen. Is there any uh, public decision? I know that Pete already made a public decision this morning about uh, following and baptism and, and everything like that. But any, uh, any more public decisions? It could be a public decision about salvation. You say, you know, Pastor Curtis, I need to be saved. I need to repent of my sins and be saved. Or it could be a public decision, like uh, Kaylee and, and uh, Dominic did this morning, you know. Baptism, you need to follow the Lord in baptism. Believer's baptism. I believe in Jesus, and He's been bugging me about getting baptized, and I want to do that. Believer's baptism. It could be a public decision about church membership. You know that God has brought you here. You know that God has called you here to be part of the body of Christ in a certain location in Fernley, Nevada. And, um, and uh, you, you uh, make that decision to let everybody else know that you want to be part of the church. Okay? And to follow the Lord if that's, if that's what the Lord is telling you to do. Okay? He places members in the body where it pleases Him. So I want to give you that opportunity. It's a public decision that we make before God. Uh, now, I'm not saying that Fernley First Baptist is the only believing church in Fernley. There's several believing churches in Fernley. But this is the one where we were placed in. This is the one where God has called us to. And this is the one we need to function in the Holy Spirit in. Okay, whether it be teaching, preaching, evangelizing, uh, you know, uh, uh, fixing something or, you know, mowing the lawn. Somebody mowed the lawn this week. Praise God. So, and I think they turned the water on too. I, you know, it was greener this week. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I noticed things like that, you know. Praise God. All right. And uh, hey, you know, it's, a, it's a, whatever God has called you to do. Because one thing is just as important as the other, right? Yeah. Amen. Anybody have a word to say before we dismiss this morning? All right. Everybody good? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, as we, um, as we come before you, Lord, with worship, as we come before you with obedience, that, Lord, you would guide us and in, in, in the way everlasting, bless our lives. And, Lord, uh, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. I pray, Father, you'd lead us to some soul this week, Lord God, that, uh, Lord, will uh, we can tell about you, Lord. Give us boldness, insight, and, Lord, uh, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you till we meet again. That's